as you can see, we're in, in the Vico office environment now. Um, the top of the screen is always the ribbon. Uh, the ribbon provides the tools available for the active view, and the active view is accessed through the workflow panel that you see to the left. The workflow panel, currently cost planner is active, provides the required action. We're now in the view dashboard, as you can see here, and that is the, the main workspace. So that's where the data is. In this case, we have the list of projects that we have in the database. And so let's go ahead and open our project, cost planning with Vico Office. And the first thing that we go in section one of the workflow panel is to define the settings. And in define the settings, uh, you can uh, add more detailed project information, uh, the code, the, the type, the address, etc. cetera. Um, you can specify a, um, a color scheme for the project. Um, and also for the, uh, for the reference. The reference is a set of, uh, of standard information uh, or an existing project that you would like to use as a default data source to copy from when you're working on the, the new estimate. Um, I'm assigning the color green uh, to that now, and I already specified the, the reference that I wanted to use uh, for this project. It can be any project or any data source that you have in your database. The next step uh, is going to be to define the targets for the project, and we're now in the Define Targets view, and I put in 50 million uh, as the budget that the owner had available. And I can further refine that, like say I want to put in numbers, uh, I can use percentages there, or I can use uh, actual dollar values, and uh, as I modify them, the budget is automatically subdivided towards the uh, 50 million that I defined as the overall budget. Right, with the targets defined, uh, we can now take a look at the first cost plan. Uh, so uh, what we see here is a, is a, a very simple overview uh, with, the, with the name of the project here at the, the top level. We have one project. And the cost per unit is $50 million. That's what I just defined. And uh, the active price of the project is $50 million, as you can see. And now I can start typing uh, any cost items. So this is really the manual part of the application. Oops. Uh, so I type the description, uh, let's say G site work, and uh, I'm tabbing through the cells in my spreadsheet. As I do that, I, I populate my, uh, my first cost item that I enter here. And I'm putting in, say, 200,000. And that is then the active price for that line item. It is not active yet. Um, collapsing this and adding another one. Uh, so let's do another example. Um, call that example. And again, I'm just tabbing, just like I would do in, in a spreadsheet, through the cells, entering the information. Uh, so uh, have 1.20 year, 1.20 square foot per square foot, tabbing through. That means then putting in a cost per unit ends up with a with a price. I'm actually going to leave that here. Now, as soon as I have all the cost allocations that I want to use, uh, that I think cover the scope. Uh, with, in this case, the, the first level of the unit format with the values and, and the prices, uh, I can then decide to activate that in my cost plan. So I activate the assembly. You can see that it changed from 50 million, the active price, to 49,650, and that's the difference of 350,000. So now my allocations are active, and that is the current status first iteration. I'm now switching to uh, Archikit, where we have a, um, a, a mass model of, of the project that was prepared by the um, design team. I'm publishing that to Vico Office to make it available for a, uh, a very high level input, so gross surface area of uh, the building. Publishing that, and as soon as that is done, I will switch back to uh, to Vico Office, and 
I'm going to um, the manage model steps. I'm going back in, in the workflow and, and defining what the input will be. Here you can see the, the collection of models that are already prepared for this demonstration. And see one with an exclamation mark. That's the model that I just published. So I'm expanding that node and activate version 2. And then uh, takeoff manager will tell me, tell us, uh, or tell me how I want to create the takeoff items. I select it layer there, and then it is activating, adding it to the set of project information. You'll see that it becomes active. That is now the current status. So let's go to the 3D view and take a look at what that looks like in, uh, in the vehicle office environment using the filtering panel. And we see here the list of projects, both ARCHICAD and Revit, as you can see. And uh, what I'm looking for is the building shell that I just published. There you go. And I want to isolate that in the current view. Let's pick that and hit apply. And now we can take a look at what that model looks like. So this is very simple information. And we want to start using that for the, the second iteration of our top line. So let's go to the, uh, the plan cost again, back to number five. And what I want to do now is um, use that information in one of the, the predefined fields from my template. So I have the second layer of unit format in this example. It could be any coding system. And what I want to do is use those quantities uh, inside uh, the, the line items that I have. So I have foundation A10, V10, superstructure. As you can see, when I select the, the quantity cell, I'm using a takeoff item and a takeoff quantity. That is multiplied with the cost per unit and results in a price. Now what I can do is, again, activate that assembly, which means that it will become part of my cost estimate. I'll do that for all the line items, so for shell, for interior as well. I'm activating that, and then C10, C20, and C30 will become part of the active cost plan. Do that for B, and I'm doing that for equipment and furnishings as well. So all of those are using the quantity input from the building shell at this moment. So there is a comparison between what we had initially and uh, what the current value is, and that's the variance. Now I switch to the cost planner in 3D view to indicate how cost or how vehicle office tells you that something is used in a different view. We use a highlighting mechanism for that. Let me create a little bit more space here. Disable the quantity data for a moment. And move this a little bit to the side. Um, so can I see it already highlighted and I want to apply the same isolate function. The model is now highlighted in the 3D space. Of course, there's not too much to see because we have all the building floors modeled with the same element. But when I rotate the model, you can see in the cost plan where which items are used by the quantity. I'm back in Constructor because I want to add some more information. And I'm doing that by adding zone-based information to my project. So this is the third iteration of our, our cost plan. This is the translation of the, the 2D space plan into really a collection of boxes. We'll take that a bit. And when I select uh, one of those zones over here, you can see that it's on a dedicated layer. And that will make it easy for me to recognize the takeoff item once it's in, uh, in vehicle office. Going back to vehicle office now. and. Um, we'll activate the, um, the manage models again. So again, going back to number three to define my input. So it builds up. Uh, I can see again the list of projects that I have available. And everything with zones is part of the, the modeling phase that in which we created that translation of the, the space plan into a zone-based model. Let's take a look at what that looks like in, uh, in Office activating those models when selecting them. 